next speaker, you guys just got a little taste of him a second ago. Um, I haven't heard him speak before, but I'm really excited. His name is Nathan. He's from RSD. He's the senior executive coach of RSD. Uh, so a real treat to have him here. Uh, he's been teaching since 2006, and he's a pioneer of natural game. He's consistently rated, like, very, very well rated, one of the top coaches by his clients, and he'll be talking about being a man and his highly regarded dating coaching and philosophy. Help me welcome Nathan to the stage. Thank you for the love. I much appreciate it. Hi, right. thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Today, yes, I spoke in uh, 2009, unrecorded. Anthony's walked me back. I thank him. I thank you guys for being here today. Uh, today, uh, being the man, yes, uh, today I'm actually going to be really talking to you about the greatest tools in your arsenal. Really the greatest tool. There's a few things that I notice on boot camp a lot, doing this every single weekend, no more than three students tops. Um, they usually, uh, guys have just in fundamentals, have problems with. It's usually going to be your eye contact. It's going to be having desire, being in touch with your own desire, and um, tonality. Tonality. Funny thing about tonality, tonality has everything to do with your body language, has everything to do with the emotion you're feeling. And um, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of an exercise a little bit later for all you guys uh, to kind of just show you a little bit about my teaching and how everything actually kind of works, how it all comes together. First off, a little bit about myself. Uh, yes, I've been in this a long time. Uh, 2002 is when I first picked up my, my first entryway drug into all of this. It was uh, David D'Angelo's first edition uh, Double Your Dating ebook. Um, how many people here have heard uh, David D'Angelo or read any of his stuff? Yeah. Yeah, entryway drug, that's what I call it. It's like marijuana to uh, regular drugs. <laughs> when you get to my level, it's more like heroin. It's just so that you get deep. But no, I've been, um, what would you consider like a natural? I don't know, I mean, we're not some mythical creature. Um, women haven't necessarily been a mystery to me. I've been, uh, lost my virginity when I was like 14. Uh, so I think it's 35 now, so. What is that, uh, you know, 20, 22 years, old something like that? Old enough, to, what's that? Your kid is old enough to vote. No, my kid's three and a half, so <laughs> not quite. Um, but yeah, so I um, did that. Um, high school was, uh, was pretty good to me. I still had like some fears. I was still afraid of rejection. A lot of things, I, I can really empathize with a lot of people on a lot of different levels. I moved around a lot. Uh, taught me a lot being in the military, originally from the Midwest, lived around the world because of that. And uh, I had to make a lot of friends really quickly. So I was kind of forced in some situations to help me. Uh, incidentally, right after I graduated, I was in the US Navy. I was search and rescue. Uh, saved a man's life, very unique one. Taught me a certain lesson about adapting to situations because uh, the man was like 6'5", he was like a brick house. He did not want to be saved. He was actually committing suicide in eight-foot seas, 22 miles off the coast of Corpus Christi. And I was pissing in my wetsuit. I was like, shit, I'm here to save dead pilots, people who want to be saved. You know, people, you know, this is not what I'm trained for. You know. And uh, sent in another buddy. I quickly adapted, changed it, uh, changed my, my methodology, came under, saved a man's life. And he's thanked me to this day for it. Uh, but it, I was scared. It was, I know a little bit about fear and uh, adaptability. Helped to rewrite some of the tactical Navy tactical manuals. Nothing else like that had ever been done. Since from there, I went to University of Texas, uh, graduated in four years, interpersonal communication, top program in the world in this. I'm very, very passionate about this. This is how I came into like the DYD ebook. A lot of the things that were being covered was actually stuff that I was studying. And I even wrote papers on social attraction. I'm very, very passionate about this stuff. Um, from there, a couple years investment banking, you know, wrote reality dating TV shows, a lot of things. I mean, really it's uh, kind of irrelevant. I just have a lot of life experiences. Then uh, RSC picked me up and 
uh, when everything was still kind of pickup lines and stuff like this and you know hung out with style before the game came out and there was something there but it didn't quite mesh I mean I, obviously I was in there because the the marketing worked I couldn't make out with the girl in 30 seconds so shit my game sucked I couldn't pull a model into like the hottest clubs bathroom and banger in five minutes man my game sucked you know <laughs> it's funny how like some marketing just like really preys on your own beliefs like so many for example I get so many good guys like cool natural like just decent good dudes on my programs and sometimes one of my biggest things I do is I just give them permission to be themselves I give them permission to actually do the things that they already know and things that you know, uh, you know just give them that confidence I, that sounds almost cliche it's just I give them permission to be who they already know they should be and uh, so anyway, so since 2006, I've been coaching around the world, more than a, more than a couple dozen countries. Um, hell, man, I just saw, what is it? Where's Chris? Oh, Leo, too. Yeah, he, he was just there with me this year. Where's Leo? Or Chris. Yeah, dude, I haven't seen you since 2007. He's like, Nathan, I remembered him. I remember sticking points. We went over interactions that we both had had. It's like, I don't remember, I mean, I remember everything. This is, that was 2007, a long time ago. Me and Jeff, um, but around the world, hundreds and hundreds of students. Um, outside of you know, the largest dating company in the world, I, just what other coach really has like the reference points of so many people? You know, Brazil, where people don't even speak you know English, and that has everything to do with what I'm going to talk about today. You know, communicating people on the core core levels, and these exercises are going to be so key to helping you to understand. Now, one thing I do want to explain, like you guys behind the camera, um, it's like I do, uh, you know, infield footage. Matter of fact, I mic up a lot of my students, particularly my returning students. I mic them up with the same mics I'm using right now, as a matter of fact, and uh, you know, an HD uh, uh, night cam, and we go over this stuff. And the funny thing that repetitively kind of happens is. We see um, the emotion is gone from the environment. So when we see it's a very third person. Anytime you guys are watching like maybe someone's infield footage, it's very third person. You don't see because when the student is actually re-looking at their footage, it's like uh, the next day it's like, oh, it's just that's not kind of in the moment. You, you don't quite understand. You're just like, you don't see it. Or, and uh, you know, I remember what the emotion's like. But... Uh, Kind of interesting, kind of interesting dynamic. So, what you guys are going to experience in this, uh, in some of the demonstrations that we're going to be doing, is you guys are going to feel the emotion. This is a game of emotion. Say pioneer, because you know I never got into like a lot of kind of like the weirder alienating, you know, names and 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 uh, things. But <clears throat> you are going to feel the emotion here in the audience. I hope you guys behind the audience or behind the camera are going to be able to see the same thing. 